Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on the Real Estate Podcast. I'm Todd Sumney, the Chief Industry Officer for HomeSmart International. And recently, I have been traveling around the country and I've been doing some marketing accelerator classes. And one of the topics of that class is open house marketing. And the traction that it is getting from all of the agents has been off the charts. The feedback I'm getting is that it that the the tactics we discuss in that session have helped agents increase their transactions so much just in the last few months that what I wanted to do today on the podcast was share with all of you an interview that I did a while ago at one of our HomeSmart business builders where we interviewed Tina Valiant from Phoenix, Arizona, and Kara Lavenda, uh, another agent here from Phoenix, Arizona, on open house marketing and how they use open houses and the tactics and the pre-marketing, the marketing at the event, the post-marketing to really grow their business. And it had such good content in that interview that I would like to share all of that with you today on the podcast. So without any further ado, I'm going to play for you the recording. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll check back in with you at the end when it's all done. Enjoy. I am so excited because we do have Tina Valiant from Phoenix, Arizona. Tina, wave to everybody. (laughs) All right, and I have Kara Lavenda, also from Phoenix, Arizona. And the two of them uh, have very different businesses, but uh, both of them use open houses so effectively, and they just have a wealth of information today to share with all of you. So I'm excited to kick this off for the month of April, four Mondays in April, we're gonna talk about open house success. How do we as agents, how do you as agents promote, dazzle, and then convert? So the goal of this, I always like to talk about the goal, why we're doing something upfront. The bottom line is we want you to do more transactions with buyers, more transactions with sellers, and one of the great ways to do that is through open houses. The more top agents that I interview all around the country, uh, the, the, the more I find how powerful open houses are and how often they are really using them. And to a certain degree, it's kind of one of the best kept secrets, like they don't want anybody else to know what they're doing. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna uncover here today is uh, the secrets of open houses and how uh, they really work. Now over the next four weeks, I'm so excited about the lineup that we have for you. Like I said today, we have Tina and Kara here on week one. Next week, we have John Musa and Sherry Patton and Jennifer Hill, both from different parts of the country. Week three, we're gonna head up to the Northwest up into Seattle, where the inventory is so tight up there that um, open houses are a key essential part of business, working with both buyers and with sellers. So we're gonna have Tammy Hatch, Kim Dwyer, Zachary Sultan and Mel Parsons are all going to join us that week from Seattle. And then week four, you can't miss week four. You can't miss any one of the weeks, but Chris Lardy and Davin Ed Emmons, both from the Irvine, Orange County area, both of them top, top agents that accept top awards every year for being top producers. And just um, very different businesses, again, very different ways to use open houses but both of them have so much knowledge to share with all of you. Uh, I just can't wait. So please make sure you participate in all four weeks of this Open House Business Builder to make sure you get the link to the webinar. If for some reason you're following this on Facebook Live and you wanna follow it next week on the webinar, go to homespark.com forward slash open dash house, get registered real quick, then block out your calendars. I want you to block out all four Mondays Block out one hour of time. We start at 11 a.m., 12 noon, 1 p.m., and 2 p.m., depending on what part of the country. And then while we're at it, make sure you join in the fifth Monday of April. We're going to do a Did You Know webinar, which I haven't announced yet, but it's a really uh, great little uh, webinar that's going to tag right on to what we're doing today with open houses. So without any further ado, we want to ignite your marketing today. We want to get going. Let's talk (laughs) about open houses. So I want to take a minute and I'm going to introduce Tina and I'm going to introduce Kara and I'm going to tell you a little bit about both of them real quick. So Tina started her real estate career in Florida 18 years ago. Is that right? Yep. And in timeshare sales. So she uh, cut her teeth uh, selling timeshares. So there's got to be some interesting stories there. Don't hate me. Work your way. (laughs) After two years of sales, you became a sales trainer. You became a sales manager. 12 years ago, Tina got into 
working with law firms and working with foreclosures and short sales. And she had a long string of history there, um, helping clients through, um, you know, through short sales and how to navigate that whole uh, um, area of real estate. During her tenure, the last attorney employer, she was um, really became a residential and commercial specialist. And uh, so she kind of got into, you know, working with investors, right? Mm -hmm. Is that for flipping and for renting? And uh, in, in uh, January of 2016, is that when or at the end of 2016? I activated my license here in January of 2017. Right, so in January of 2017, mm -hmm. Tina uh, joined uh, HomeSmart here in Phoenix. And uh, we, uh, we're gonna tell you more about her when we get her, her slide up here. But she is phenomenal. I love her phrase, it's purely open houses and relationships. That's one of the phrases that she shared with me. Um, so anyway, uh, that's a little bit about Tina. And then I want to tell you a little bit about Kara. Kara has been a licensed real estate agent for about a year and a half. Yep. Uh, prior to that, she lived in New York. Uh, she's traveled frequently. She's uh, just a, a vibrant personality. One of the things I love about Kara so much is her attitude and her approach to business. And so in a year and a half, you started working under the mentorship of uh, one of our other fellow agents. And uh, she's taught you a tremendous amount. Selfish. And last year you decided to kind of take it up a notch. And so uh, you're going to learn a lot about Kara as well. So without further ado, Tina, I'm going to dig in with you into open houses a little bit first. So you okay. run the TK Group. You're okay. a team leader and associate broker. Yeah. So for all of you who want to contact Tina, here's her phone number. Here's her uh, email address. Tell you a little bit about Tina here. So 2017, she moved to Arizona, activated her license rather in January of 2017. She did 42 properties on her own and began building a team or started to build her team. 2018, she built the team to eight agents. Uh, last year, they did 100 properties, $26.4 million in volume. And in 2019, she has a team of 15 agents. She has 36 sold or under contract and it's April first, so that's in within three months. It's actually so gone up. That's uh, and five this weekend, right? <laughs> five this weekend. Five this weekend. <laughs> doing what? Doing open houses. Yep. So here's the thing that is staggering to me. Um, I love the phrase purely open houses and relationships. And then she conducts twenty one to twenty nine open houses a week and is on track to sell about two hundred homes so far this year, right? Yep and doing that through open houses. So let's dig in a little bit, and I have a phrase that I call, it's um, promote, dazzle, and convert. That's what we're gonna do with open houses, and I kind of, if you break it down, promote is kind of what we do before. Dazzle is what we do during or at the open house, and then what do we do to convert the business, either there at the open house or after, what's the follow-up, how do we engage customers? So uh, tell me a little bit about what you do with open houses and the phrase of purely open houses and relationships. Last year was a year where we tried a couple of different things, advertising in newspapers and different things because our target market is mostly retirees, okay? Um, none of that worked at all. I spent a tremendous amount of money on different things that just didn't work for us. What really works for us is having our own open house sign team and putting out 21 to 29 open houses a week where we farm, um, it's a situation where every day is Saturday except for Sunday because it's all retirees. So we do open houses that. Wednesday through Sunday. Okay. And my agents get to pick when they want to do their open houses. My assistant Mariah puts the schedule together, puts all the marketing materials together. And my agents, when they get there, all of their signs are out, 20 to 25 open house signs per open house. And um, all their marketing materials are waiting for them and they just show up and start being with people. All right. Yeah. All right. So what is some of the uh, pre-marketing that you do? Like what's, what's some of the promote before? How many people did you have through this weekend? Um, just yesterday we had 85 couples through, um, so five open houses. 85 couples through five open houses. Mm -hmm. That's a tremendous number. It is. And uh, wow. Okay. And so how did you promote? How did you get 85 people through? <laughs> <laughs> How okay. Did you do that? So I don't do a tremendous amount of promoting ahead of time. We'll post our open house tour, like on Facebook and things like that. Um, we have built such a reputation because if you think about it, if I have 
five open houses or six open houses, or you have one where I had eight open houses one weekend, right. and they each have 20 to 25 signs out per open house, I choose a five mile radius typically to put all of my open houses in. So that entire area is flooded with my signs. So how many open house signs do you have? 300. 300. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Yeah. I've talked to some agents about that before because once you own an open house sign, you own it. You don't you have to it. keep paying for it. It's not like running an ad in a local newspaper or you know something that it disappears right. one month after running or a week after running. So 300 open houses. And, and you they're put H frame. An H frame. They go okay. into, the ground. into the ground. My son and, and his partner okay. take care of it every morning. They go out, awesome. put the signs out every afternoon. They pick them up. Okay. Every day. <laughs> so how many directionals? So do you do like on the different corners and go onto the main streets and affect or drive people in too? So we go onto the main streets and have three leading up to the um, main road to turn into. Okay. And we have it on both sides of the road. Okay. Um, we have arrows. We also have U-turn signs. Okay. So when they're in the neighborhood, if they've gone too far, they'll come across a U-turn sign. Okay. Um, and then in the neighborhood, we try to do only one directional sign per turn. Okay. Because neighbors start to get a little panicky yeah. if, right. you, if they see three and four and five. Right. So um, we've limited it to that. But in our area, we will put um, signs on one main road and another main road coming in. As long as they're within a one to one and a half mile radius, we can draw people in. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. And I love that because then basically people see your name Everywhere. All as they're driving around all weekend, and if you're doing as many open houses as you're doing, mm -hmm. and doing them on a regular basis, it's that repetition in advertising and marketing, you know, we call that frequency. Yes. And the more frequency you have, the more each individual view, the more top of mind awareness that you begin to create. My son put out over 20,000 open house signs last year. Wow. 20,000. 20, he got an award at the end of the year because without him, we went and do yeah. what we do, right? I love it. So you so, took him, you had a little award. Oh, we had a huge award. awards, a award ceremony for the team. And okay. all of our affiliates came and everything. And, and he had no idea he was getting an award. I love that. He was most that valuable is, player. That is so awesome. That's so awesome. how old is your son? He's 20. 20. Mm -hmm. That's he's awesome, actually my though. stepson, but okay. he's my son. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's awesome, though. Yep. 20,000 signs. I'm going to have to break that down later into how many, yeah. you know, per week. He couldn't so, believe I counted them. Yeah. He was like, and how did you count that? I'm like, oh, no, every week. Like, every I keep week. track of what you're doing. I love it. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Incredible. All right, tell me a little bit about your open house tour here. Is this a flyer? Is this an electronic yep. file? So, paper? What is it that you do? This is printed, and it's at all of our open houses. This okay. is the, the only marketing piece that we actually put out at our open houses. Okay. Um, we don't print individual property flyers because we want them to ask us questions and give us the opportunity to email it to them. Okay. And that works beautifully. Okay. So we now have people coming into our open houses just asking for the tour flyer. Right. Because they know that it's coming every week. So okay. they'll come in and say, hey, I just wanted a tour flyer for the week. I wanted to know where you guys are. Right. And then they'll start going on their tour. <laughs> okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. great. Okay. And so then and the thing that I like about it, Kara and I had a conversation, I think, oh, two weeks ago, and we were talking about the more um, top listing agents that I interview. So agents who have a lot of listings, mm -hmm. um, they often advertise multiple open houses. So instead of just advertising one, they're advertising multiple and they do it intentionally because mm -hmm. the perception it gives is, oh, I have all these listings. Mm -hmm. And so just the fact that you have people coming through and right here, what do you have? Eight, nine of them, mm -hmm. nine on one flyer. Mm -hmm. That tells me that you're a heavy lister, that you have, you know, that you're the right person to list my home. So I love this concept of multiple property marketing when it comes to open houses. Well, and let's talk about that for a minute because most people don't have the luxury that I have of having a team to be able to handle that, right? So my best advice for people that don't have a team is get together with the other people from your office that have listings in your same area and co-market something like this together so that you're bouncing people back and forth That's between your idea. open houses. Yeah. That's how I started. Okay. And, and it, it worked beautifully when I started and it was just me because, you know, we would call all of the agents around us and say, hey, we're going to have an open house at this house on this day. Would you like to participate so that I can send people over to your house? Love because it. mine may not work for them. And then you also start building relationships with other people in your office and it becomes a thing that you do together. Right. Right. I love that. Okay. So everyone, action item. I want you to write down action item and circle it. 
and I want you to basically collaborate with other agents in your office. Mm -hmm. And so if nine of you in one office all get together, mm -hmm. you can create a flyer just like this and mm -hmm. coordinate your open houses Absolutely. and have the same multi-property marketing effect. And for HomeSmart, and it's great because they all have their open house signs out and HomeSmart is everywhere, I which just that. brings more brand recognition. I love that. All right, so we're gonna have to do that. Yeah. All right, I like it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about during the open house, okay? Okay. So you used a phrase with me where you were talking about the psychology of our open house guests. You were mm -hmm. saying, um, you had a phrase, not buying their popcorn, <laughs> right? Yes. And um, the, the phrase, I think, too, was um, bringing their task tension down during the initial initial meet and greet. Right. Uh, talk about that a little bit. What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, unfortunately, we as realtors have gotten this negative connotation that people are going to walk into our open houses and they're going to be bombarded by the agent who just wants to sell them a house and get their commission, right? right. Just like if you're walking on a car sales lot, right? right. You feel the same way. Right. What do you do before you walk into to a sales lot? Right. You come up with a story so that they'll leave you alone. Our open house guests are no different. I actually just had a couple confirm this with me at a listing appointment where they actually told me the story they had come up with in the car before they went in to meet my agent. And my agent was sitting there dumbfounded because he couldn't believe that what I tell him is actually real. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and he was like, oh my gosh, they actually proved it. Right. So I call their story the popcorn. Okay. Um, and whenever we do the training for the team, we actually bring in popcorn for everybody. And okay. we're, we're not buying the popcorn today. No right. matter what they say to you when they walk in the door, they have an agent, they're just looking for their friends, they, they're neighbors down the street, they just want to see the design of the house. Whatever they say, nine times out of ten, it's not the truth. Right. And that's okay. Right. You just keep going with your process as if they didn't say it at all. Right, right. And so you want your team to go through this process no matter what. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, like this couple, by the end of it, their true story eventually came out. And their it true, comes and you out. got to the need. You Absolutely. Got to need, right? Absolutely. And, and right. really what it comes down to is you have to go through a process. Right. So when they walk in the door, I actually have some of my agents stay seated at their table. Every one of my open houses is set up exactly the same. They have a table, black tablecloth, four chairs, okay. their laptop. Because when people come in, they'll actually sit down at the table and start conversing with you. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Some of my agents, I have them greet them closer to the door because they they have a demeanor that's more open and friendly. Some of my agents seem a little more intimidating. I sit at a table right. when I'm at an open house because okay. I might be a little more intimidating. Right. Right. I know. Hard to believe. And so what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I don't see that at all. Actually. I can't no, be no. in sales. But when you, but when you uh, so when they come through the door, what do you do? Just say hi, you know, yeah. like, like make yourself at home? Or like what's No. Your... So what they when they come in, um, we actually greet them, tell them thank you so much for stopping in today. Um, and then we're like, we tell them kind of the plan of the day. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell you the story behind the home. Right. And then we're going to have you, um, we're going to set you free so that you can tour the home on your own and then you can come back to me afterward. Okay. And then we, we let them know in that moment. So we start in with the story. Right. And we ask their permission. Is it okay if I share with you the story? Okay. By telling the story of the home, right. now this is a home. It's not a property. Right. So when they're walking through the home, Somebody they can actually <laughs> I know. I like this. they can actually walk through right. and they're picturing this family that we just told them the story about. Right. Right. And they're starting to see things that maybe they wouldn't have looked at if you were kind of following them around. Right. right? right. After we're done with the story, we go right into, by the way, the homeowners have asked us to have you fill out this survey. Mm -hmm. um, your sign in is at the bottom. If you don't want me to contact you, just let me know. Right. Now, most agents don't throw that in because they're afraid they're going to say no. It's right. okay if they say no. There's a reason why they're saying no, and it's because you haven't built rapport with them. Right. So at that point, you give them the clipboard with the pen and the survey, which is a simple survey. Mm -hmm. Not, I used to have a lot of words. Right. We've revised it like four times. Simple, simple, simple. Simple, simple, take, simple. Take words away. Exactly. Right. And, and we put the circles for the numbers because we mm -hmm. found that they were having a hard time with not knowing what to put. Right. And um, they, we set them free. Right. Exactly what we told them we would do. Okay. We don't follow them around. Right. We don't bother them. By the time they come back to the table to bring you back their survey, you ask them, right. so what did you guys think of the home? Right. Not the house, the home. Right. And they just start talking. Right. That's how we bring their task attention down. 
I love that. And I know you have your process too, and we're going to dig into that in a minute, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and all of that too. So I love this. And so for those of you, um, is, is this like, this is your survey, mm -hmm. your uh, questionnaire. Mm -hmm. So this up on the screen, this is how simple it is. And then now you've got it, they come back, they give you that questionnaire. Mm -hmm. What typically happens when they have this questionnaire? Like you, at that point, do you look at it and try to engage or how do you take it any further? Or you just No, what you know? we do is we, we take it back at that time and we ask them the simple question, so what did you guys think of the home? At that point, their task tension is so low, they start telling you, oh, this home is a little big for us. And, and you know, I really wanted three bedrooms. And they just start telling you kind of what they were looking for because you didn't bother them. Right. And you weren't mm -hmm. like everybody else. The key to doing successful open houses is that you're not like everybody else. There's something different about you. Right, right. So that's when we start doing our discovery with them. We'll literally flip over their page, and my agents have a discovery questionnaire on the back of their survey that I created because they were having a hard time thinking of questions to ask. I have a lot right. of brand new agents on my team. Right. And so they'll go through, and they'll be like, oh, well, well tell me, what, what were you hoping for? And they'll start asking them questions. And whatever they told us at the door up front doesn't matter anymore. Right. Because now they feel comfortable to talk to you. Right. Okay, so everyone, real quick, too. I do know, I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything, but I think you're in the process of maybe having a book someday. I am. Okay. It'll be done by the end of the so year. Then, so keep her in your contact list because when that book comes out, there's going to be lots of good uh detailed information in there that uh, I can't wait to see the book so yep. good job on yeah. that but, thank you um, so what, what okay so then you got the follow so let's talk about the house itself mm -hmm. do you take down family photos do you put like do you how do you declutter the home what like what do you do prior to the open house to make the home presentable the way you want or what's your philosophy that's a good question. Um, actually, what we do is we, we don't want any family um, photos in the home. A lot of our homes are actually vacant, so then we set up our table and put okay. up our tablecloth and all of that. Um, however, there's a lot of homes that aren't as well, and the people have lived in the home 30 years at this point. So right. um, there's usually at least two or three or four of us that go on each listing appointment because they always come and shout out me. Okay. And um, so at that moment, once they give me the absolute yes, we're listing the home, my entire team is up moving furniture around for them. Okay. So in my home, we mm -hmm. have hundreds of photos on frames all over the whole house, <laughs> on every wall, <laughs> on just whatever. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just... it's. It's just part of what we do. So literally, do you have them take those off the wall? Mm -hmm. We do. Okay. All right. We do. And we've even helped people with that. Um, right. Mariah, JJ, and I went into a home last year where they had a lot of knick-knacky stuff. Right. And the home looked small because of it. Okay. And so we actually went in and helped them take things off the wall. And they were packing things up as we were taking it off the wall and maneuvering right. things around just to, to help them so that it wasn't a strain on them. Okay. But it's about the relationship with your client. Okay, so you've already built this nice relationship. You brought their task tension down, right? Mm -hmm. So how about follow-up? Like, how do you, so the last part, we're talking about converting. Mm -hmm. So how do you, I mean, you know, it, it's, it'd be terrible to have all this activity come through and not have it actually convert to transaction. So okay. talk about that for a minute. So one of the trainings that I'm actually known for is Go For No. And any of you can purchase the book Go For No. It's not my book. It's an amazing book. It's 84 pages. I recommend it. My team goes for no. They actually get awards for the most no's on the team. Okay. okay. Every week we report our no's. And at the end of the year, whoever has the most gets, gets their award. And usually that's the same person that has the most transactions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ironically, that's how that works. Okay. So with that said, they are looking for different ways to get no throughout the entire discovery process with the understanding that their ultimate goal is to get a confirmed appointment right. that of some sort. If they don't get a confirmed appointment, their next step is to get a confirmed when can I call you? Can I email you this? Can I set you up a search? I Whatever the commitment is, they get credit for that every week on my team. They report on Mondays at the meeting, and we have a contest. Whoever set up the most searches, did the most CMAs, got listing appointments, got buyer's appointments, got commitment of some sort, that person wins $100. So in a sense, if 20 people came through an open house, the object is to get um, 20 either no's or commitments mm -hmm. out of all 20. So whether yep. it be a CMA or send me properties when they hit the market, send me homes that are similar yep. to this, let me know what your next open house you know, schedule is like, right? So And um, now we're putting together you know, a video um, 
text marketing campaign okay. where my daughter does all of my online marketing and she's putting together scripts for the agents right now while they're shooting simple videos of themselves. And after they're met at open houses, a video will automatically go out where, when it's put into my CRM saying, thank you so much for stopping into my open house today. I don't want you to forget my face, right. something funny, um, just so that we stay in front of them face-wise. Right. And I just actually, ironically, um, interviewed another top agent, or I heard him give a presentation where he was basically saying that same thing, that if, in his case, he's talking about marketing to 50 people around each mm -hmm. open house, and his goal isn't to have all 50 people, his goal is to get a bunch of no's, but then he's got 21 people mm -hmm. that have said yes, and they're engaged, and then that's how... So uh, I like this, go for the no, go for the yes. commitment. And I that's like that. another thing I forgot to mention. Um, when we do list a home, um, we have a very similar flyer that's just of that property. And one mm -hmm. pre-marketing thing that we do is my son takes out 150 flyers around the neighborhood to invite all of the neighbors to the first open house. Love it. So what does he do? Does he put that on the front door? Yep. Is he, so he's, um, how does he attach yep. it? Um, I think he uses Sorry tape. Tactical. Okay. He, he uses tape. Okay. Um, and not the really, really sticky kind because the, you okay. can hurt the paint on the door. We, right, we've right. learned that over time. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah, so we, we have found um, that by doing that, the neighbors send people to us. Okay. Because they know people that want to move into their neighborhood. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, what uh, what else? What about what else about converting? Or what would you like? I have some social media stuff. I mm -hmm. want to go over here in just a second. But just what else did we miss? We're talking about promoting, dazzling, converting. What did I cover the whole thing, or is there anything I missed? I think that the most important thing for people to understand out there is this: when you commit to something, no matter what it is, you're setting them up a search that day. You're going to be calling them the next day. Whatever the commitment is that you have made to them, you better do it 100%. Right. Because if you don't, they're not going to believe anything you say from that point forward. Right. So I think that's the biggest thing. I like that. All right. I was just checking my time here. Okay. So let's talk social media real quick. Okay. Uh, so when I connected with you on social media, mm -hmm. we had the personal Tina Valiant, mm -hmm. but then we also had the TK group. Yes. So you run two different um, mm -hmm. Facebook sites. Yes. So you run your personal, you run your business. Yes. The thing that I noticed about your personal is your personal didn't have a lot of real estate on it. Mm -mm. It had a lot of inspirational, mm -hmm. it had a lot of um, personal connecting thoughts, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then your business page was where you had your open houses. I love the multiple open house, the new listing. Um, I love this one. It happened to be the week that the blizzard hit, like <laughs> wherever it was, the, like so Colorado, right? Talk my, about the My daughter, Hope, she's in Florida, she creates all of my ads. Okay. And and she runs my whole social media online marketing as well as a couple of other things. And she's we're trying just doing out. that from Florida, logging mm -hmm. in as your account. Yep. And doing all that for you, right? Yep. Yep. I love absolutely. That. I love that. Um, and actually, um, a couple of the ads she put together also for Luke Air Force Base because we're one of the preferred um, real estate groups for Luke Air Force Base. Okay. So with the personal, I do the inspiration because I have another book coming out this year that's on a personal level. Okay. So that's what that whole um, thought of the day is about, is motivating people, inspiring people, and encouraging them to overcome um, any adversities that they have in their life. So is that every single day? Every day. Every day? Every day. Okay. Except what? for Wednesdays. Wednesdays are my day off okay. from everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. I don't even have my phone on Wednesdays. Mariah has it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> good. Yes. Good for you. Yes. Okay, good. Um, all right, and I love this one too. I called this one out because um, you're specializing in military message right here and talking about military discounts and VA loans. Mm -hmm. And um, can you talk about that a little bit too? And So this you know. ad was the one specifically created for Luke Air Force Base when you go to their site. Okay. Um, and so Michael Freeman with the Freeman team at Fairway is one of our sponsors on this as well as VIP. Um, inspection. Um, Mark, they're amazing. So they partnered with us on that as well as my mover, Robert, and with um, MoveU. And they put together all of this stuff with us to offer different discounts to VA and, and veterans and anybody having to do anything with service in right. general. Right. And we deal with so many retired veterans in our market. Right. So we wanted to put something together special for them. Love that. Awesome. Yeah. Last thing here real quick. Um, I noticed in this one you have Texting to 602, blah, 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 for mm -hmm. more info. 
Um, as you all know, I love texting, and I think that <laughs> texting is one of the um, great ways to reach people because you can always text. I mean, I could text if I wanted to right in the middle of this, right? You know? Right. So, um, you know, it's just uh, texting. So does that work? Yes. And even with your demographic, too. Um, works, actually, right? um, so a couple of interesting facts. Um, 55 plus is the largest demographic learning how to use Facebook today, right. which is why we use Facebook as our main platform so far. Okay. Um, they also have learned how to text, and when we send them videos on text, they get so excited. Right. They're like, how did you do that? Can you show me how to do that? I want to know how to do that. Right. I can send that to my grandkids. Right. So we have a really good time with them on the technology. We always ask them when we meet them what's the best way to get in contact with them. And when we put out ads like this, people do text us. Okay. Um, but you know, they may not have that technology. If they're 85, they and we do right. deal with a lot of 85 year olds, they may not know how to text or they can't see it. Okay. Right. In reality, <laughs> are you to do the videos? By the way, are you what are you using? Anything special? Any service or software or no. anything like that? You're it just is using all the phone? phone. Okay, it is all phone, okay. and then my daughter takes them and edits them. Okay, um, my other daughter edits videos for us. Okay, and you're texting those videos a lot mm -hmm. too, as well as doing using them in other ways. Lion Desk is a great platform as a CRM, and they have a texting capability with videos as well as regular text campaigns. So as soon as we put it into one of our campaigns, they will get a video as often as we want them to. Wow, so much powerful and good information in that interview. I hope you all enjoyed it. A quick shout out and a quick thank you to Tina Valiant and Kara Lavenda, who both uh, were so generous with their time to join us that day on that HomeSmart Business Builder on Open House Marketing, but also to allow me to repost it today on the Real Estate Podcast, Smart Strategies to Accelerate Your Real Estate Business. I thank all of you for joining us today. I'm Todd Sumney, the Chief Industry Officer for HomeSmart International, and I hope to see you back for future episodes of The Real Estate. Until then, take care.